Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the conference so far. And my name is Coco Tan. I'm the board member of GSTC and also the co founder of Line Train and Tenti Resorts in China. So, Coco is actually not my Chinese name. My Chinese name is Tang Su Jun. Hopefully, you can record it later on because I have no struggles remember all of our panelists' names. So, that's why I'm trying to make me a good excuse about that. So, um, Today, we get a group of very distinguished experts from the resource industry talking about that very interesting topic about how sustainability can uh, address, uh, drive in the uh, um, resource industry. So we have the very good opportunity to dive into the importance, challenges, and opportunities in this industry. So that's why we have representatives from different resorts and talk about their real practice uh, experiences. Let me just firstly bring you up uh, all of the uh, wonderful panelists trying to remember the name, right, Ms. Yishim Donkukan, uh, District Marketing and Community uh, Communication Manager from Radisson Hotel Group, Mr. Uzaya Jaffer, ESG Manager from Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, Ms. Susanna Vincenta Alamo, um, ESG Director from Peninsula Papagayo, Mr. Tongsh Batum, General Coordinator from Barut Hotels. Thank you very much, all of the panelists, for joining us, and thank you very much for everybody in the audience uh, joining us today. We all love resorts, so when we travel, we want to want to go to the place that find the best services in a particular area, in a good location, that we have very good facilities, and all the trained staff to, can help us find the good services, where to go, what to do. Um, but there are some kind of challenges associated with resorts industry. For example, most of the resorts might locate in a very biodiversity-sensitive area. So if there is an improper land development, can cause habitat loss and destructions. That will be, have negative impacts on our biodiversity for sure. And some of the resorts, because we want to provide a very good immersive experience to our guests, so we use a lot of water for different purposes bar and pools and, 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 and even for sinks. So in the areas where water is a stress, that could be a problem. And also we have different other aspects in terms of carbon emission and also, also like food waste and also some social issues, including the disability inclusion in the resorts industry too. So I'm not going to name it all the, all the afters. So, but there are some kind of opportunities associated with the resorts industry as well with the increasingly awareness of the, of the travelers. They want to search for very good op op options with environmental, uh, sustainable, and also socially responsible. So for us, it's not just about the compliance or non-compliance risks or about the environmental risks. It can be some good opportunities and, and the, um, uh, for, for us to take our business back in the resource industry as well. I'm not going to de uh, dive deeper into this because we have very wonderful panelists. They have very rich experience in this. So um, let's just go to our first speaker, Yushin. Sure. Could you please take the stage and share a little bit more about what you do with the tourism? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Yishim. I am from the Radisson Hotel Group. Um, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for coming. I just arrived to Antalya this morning. What an amazing conference that my ears fulfilled since the beginning of the day with too much very valuable information. Thank you for, for coming and joining to our session and sharing the memorable moments today together. Because at Radisson Hotel Group, we create memorable moments every day, every time under the Yes, I Can spirit. So, Today, I will just start my presentation with some footprints globally about the Radisson Hotel Group. As you can see on the screen, uh, we are on the globally operating nine different brands, and I'm sure that you are mainly familiar to all those brands from Radisson Collection to Radisson Blue, Radisson Red to Parking by Radisson uh, Hotels. And also, oops, I'm so sorry, uh, in the EMEA and APAC region, we are over 95 different countries and territories 
and we have over 85 under development resource, 46 under operation uh, resource, and total we have 131 resorts. And in again the same region, over 1,140 hotels under uh, operation and development, more than 200,000 rooms, and over 70,000 team members are creating memorable moments every day for our guests and for our owners. When we look at our resort footprint uh, globally, again, um, as previously mentioned, uh, from Malta to, to Fiji, from uh, Great Grand Canaria Islands to Cheshme, from Riyadh, everywhere, as you see on the, uh, the map, we have a very wide geographical area where we are operating our resorts hotels. So when we look at our progress, whatever we do on Radisson Hotel Group hotels, we do our business ethically in all we do and want to be a sustainable and responsible business for people, for communities and for our planet as well. Simply saying that whatever we are doing for under the Radisson Hotel Group and the Responsible Business Project, our three key pillars are so important. As you see, people, communities and uh, the planet. So what we are doing, we are a responsible business leader committed to net zero by 2050 and published approved near-term science-based targets and also pioneering key milestones and initiative for all responsible business projects. So by committing the net zero by 2050, of course, we implemented several uh, initiatives, including some net zero transformations and with approved science-based carbon emission reductions targets for 2030 by SBTI, and we place among the leading companies aligning the, the targets with worldwide COP climate goals. And we also signed the Glasgow Declaration and subscribed to Nature Positive Vision for the industry. And in addition, as we are achieving our goals, we launched the Renewable Energy Strategy as well as guidelines for the green building constructions and conversations. And uh, last but not least, um, on the, the worldwide uh, respectful magazine Forbes, second year in a row, Radisson Hotel Group has been recognized as the number four best employer in travel and leisure industry. So when it comes to the, some resort initiatives, sustainable initiatives that we have been implementing in our hotels, I would love to share some samples from our resorts all around the world. Uh, Radisson Blue Resort Fiji Denaru Islands uh, is one of the, the successful uh, resorts that they had the largest hotel solar installation in the Pacific uh, area. And additionally, preheated water using waste heat is also um, saves up to 70% of gas and 20% lower carbon emission for, per gas night and over 40% lower portable water consumption compared to the, the hotels in the, the Pacific area. And the hotel is also saved 300,000 liters of water per year by renovating the lagoon pool. Another sample from the Radisson Blue Mountain Resort by Stoloten, a Norwegian uh, mountain. So the hotel is also implemented the, the solar PC system uh, in the area and uh, has implemented several sustainable initiatives uh, also including a solar in the roof of the resort, produce the electricity from the renewable sources, recycling ventilation system for swimming pool, 
uh, which is also they are capturing a long periods during the daytime from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., increasing the system efficiency. And one sample from the Radisson Blue Mossi Oa Tunia Livingston, uh, a resort from Zambia. Uh, the, 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 the resort get the age building certification in 2022. And also the project considers energy, water and materials measures in order to achieve cost savings, carbon emissions reduction and improved lighting, cooling system, and heat uh, hub. And the water reduction was achieved by the installation of water efficiency, shower heads, pochettes, and closets for lower flow rates. And before I move to this one, I also would like to share one key initiative uh, that we conducted during the pandemic. Um, it is a, a local initiative, a local sustainable experience in the resorts in Turkey, in Russia, and in Croatia as well. Um, uh, if you also visit YouTube, we have a lovely video of this project, which is called Voice of the Sea. Uh, the, the, the project eventually is just stating that we place seashells in the beaches. Of course, our aim is to give the message to our people who are already coming and experiencing our resource to protect the sea, to protect the beach, and to protect the whole planet. And since the digitalization is getting more and more important in our industry, especially on the previous session, I don't know if you had a chance to, to, to listen to uh, very experienced leaders from different industries, we also took this opportunity and we had arranged a digital campaign to promote this uh, social responsibility project as well as to reach to more audience to create awareness and also deliver our message all around the world. Simply, the seashells was placed in different areas of the beaches. Inside the seashells, we placed microphones, a, a, a short recording, and whomever see the seashells, the kids, the, 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 the families, everyone, as we, as a reflection, we always put the seashells in our ears, whatever the size it is. And people, whomever see the seashells, directly put it to their ears. And all of a sudden, a, a young boy and a young girl voice is coming. Hey, my friend. Why don't we protect our beaches, our environment together, starting as of today? Please clean up our beaches, put everything to the, to the bins and everything. So let's help us to keep the, the environment clean and continue to protect the um, planet. And again, so I would like you to go to YouTube and watch this uh, short video accordingly. I think I need to be a bit quick uh, <laughs> so that I also would like to, to share our Net Zero Resort Identity Future Prof Resorts um, uh, pillars as well. We are minimizing waste and uh, water footprint. We are low energy instantly, of course, with uh, different initiatives. We built planet guidelines, and we are just, of course, sharing with all the hotels around the globe. And renewable energy sourcing is one of the key important things that we are delivering to our hotels and to the people. Thank you very much, Isham. Thank you very much yeah. for the wonderful insights. I know that Radisson is also the world's very first group to, to make meetings and events carbon negative across more than 400 hotels. Very good. Um, so before we move on to the next speakers, I would like to remind all of the audience, please do use Slido to submit your questions if you want to interact with our panelists. And at the end of the discussion, you might already uh, get, to, uh, get used to Slido. It's a very good way that we can interact with each other. So uh, now let's keep the stage to our next speaker, Mr. Uzaya Jeffrey from Four Seasons. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's great to be here on this uh, distinguished panel uh, to chat a little bit about uh, sustainability in resorts. And um, similar to Yashim, going to be talking a little bit about uh, who we are as an organization. 
I'm going to also be sharing a little bit about our approach to sustainability, our resort ecosystem, as well as some examples of how our, how our resorts are, are addressing sustainability challenges locally, um, as well as uh, capturing on opportunities or taking advantage of opportunities. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with us, uh, Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts is one of the world's premier luxury hospitality companies. Today, you can find our 126 hotels and resorts and 53 luxury residences in 47 countries globally. And uh, at the moment, uh, we have over 50 projects either planned or under development. Um, and we're definitely an organization that uh, is powered by its people. And our over 50,000 uh, team members are creating phenomenal experiences for our guests, residents, and partners. Um, on a daily basis, and they're doing this through an unwavering commitment to luxury with a genuine heart. Um, so the concept of sustainability, it's, it's something that's you know, very present today, and it's something that's emerged and evolved significantly since uh, Isidore Sharp, a young Canadian architect, founded our company, um, founded our company in, uh, in 1960. But we've always acted upon and embodied the spirit of the guiding principle of the golden rule. And um, and uh, that's something that Isidore Sharp really strongly believed in and instilled in the organization. And that's the simple idea that, you know, we should treat others the way we would want to be treated. And that's throughout our history, that's guided everything really from uh, how we approach the guest experience all the way through um, how we connect to the environment, people, and communities. And uh, really, we're committed to building upon that strong history of supporting our communities and the environment. And through our ESG program, we seek to preserve and regenerate the beautiful places in which we operate um, and leave a positive, enduring impact on our communities. And, uh, um, and um, you know, our ESG program is centered around two distinct pillars. One is planet and the other is people. And from a, from a planet perspective, you know, as stewards of the ecosystems in which we uh, operate, uh, we recognize our critical role in preserving the, f the, the planet for future generations. Um, and we're definitely committed to um, embedding sustainable practices throughout our operations. So uh, from, a, from a planet perspective, um, we're focused on three focus areas. Uh, designing sustainable environments, which is all about the built environment, uh, minimizing our environmental footprint. Um, and, and that includes, you know, insourcing and procurement and uh, connecting to the environment locally. Um, and um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the people side, uh, we're very much focused, uh, we very much believe that um, all of our, our, our presence in a community should improve people's lives. Um, and, and we're committed to supporting our, our people, supporting our communities and enriching, enriching their lives. And uh, we have three focus areas that we, 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 um, we really hone in on. And that's the first is advancing diversity, inclusion and belonging. The second is creating life changing opportunities. And the third is giving back locally and advancing diversity, inclusion and belonging is all about our people. Um, you know, supporting them um, and, and ensuring that they belong um, and that they have the resources that they need uh, to, to flourish. Creating life-changing opportunities is all about, you know, helping underrepresented groups through careers in hospitality um, and supporting local businesses. And giving back locally is simply, you know, donating times, uh, our time and, and funds to those in need. Um, as far as our resort ecosystem goes, uh, we have 47 resorts in 23 countries, and that makes up a significant uh, proportion of our portfolio um, and you know you'll see that we have you know a lot of resorts in the Americas but also a significant number outside of the Americas too so quite a quite a variation and uh, that variance is important to highlight because I think when people think about resorts uh, you know a lot of the time they think about that beachfront property um, but our, our resort to Four Seasons is, is can be a lot of things for example we have you know, a traditional, uh, um, you know, ocean or, or a beachfront sort of resort uh, in Four Seasons Resort Bali at Jimbaran Bay. But we also have a resort like Four Seasons Resort Scottsdale um, at True North, which is located in, in the desert oasis of Scottsdale, Arizona in the United States. And to contrast that even further, uh, we have a property like Four Seasons Resort and Residences Whistler, um, which is located in Whistler, British Columbia, Canada, one of the world's premier um, ski destinations. So. Um, that's something that we had to factor in when, when developing our sustainability strategy. It needs to be sufficiently flexible to be, uh, to, to be relevant, really, to, to any location um, and, and you know, 
we have resorts, we have hotels, as well as uh, residences. So, so that's one, one component uh, that we have to keep in mind. But also, you know, the impacts that resorts have, you know, impacts on the environment, uh, on, on resource use, on emissions, on waste, um, um, on local communities, on local infrastructure. That's something that we have to balance, as well as, you know, other considerations. Let's be honest, there's other things that we have to factor in, like business goals, like customer expectations, like what does the, what does the luxury customer expect? stakeholder needs as well, um, uh, regulation. So those are all factors that we had to consider and that we did in the development of our sustainability strategy. Um, so there's a lot of examples that I could share uh, about our resorts doing some phenomenal things, but uh, we don't have enough time, unfortunately. Um, so I would like to share two examples, though, um, and the first being Four Seasons Resort Lanai and uh, their efforts to protect marine ecosystems. So. Uh, Four Seasons Resort Lanai is located on the island of Lanai on, in, in Hawaii, and the, the Hawaiian Islands are home to about 410,000 acres of living coral reef, and those, that, that whole ecosystem is under a lot of stress from, from human activities, among other things, including, uh, including through pollution, through the use of, of chemical-based fertilizers, herbicides, and fungicides that are predominantly used in, uh, in landscaping. Um, and um, you know that this particular property, there's there's 12 acres of of heavily curated grounds. And Robert Woodman, the director of landscaping, and the team really wanted to ad uh, really wanted to address the use of fertilizers um, and and chemicals in landscaping, and wanted to transition to fully organic uh, landscaping. And uh, and uh, the, the 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 there's a local NGO called the the uh, uh, Maui Nui Marine Resource Center, which is a a local nonprofit working to, to, to support and create healthier oceans. They have uh, recently come out with, uh, with a certification called the Reef Friendly Landscaping Program. And Robert Woodman and the team, they, for a period of eight months, they worked to transition to fully organic landscaping. And they, early in early 2023, they finally received this, um, this certification, becoming the first resort to, to be gold certified and successfully transitioned to 100%. Uh, fully organic landscaping, and there's other initiatives that they've done to to address the marina ecosystems in, in particular. But I definitely wanted to to share this example as a, as a leading practice. Um, I wanted to highlight one more example for you, and that's from uh, that's from Four Seasons Resort Costa Rica at uh, Peninsula Papagayo and Peninsula Papagayo. Something you'll hear a lot from uh, Susanna about. Uh, they're doing some phenomenal things. Um, but I wanted to highlight what the uh, resort's done on the sustainable food and beverage, uh, uh, from a sustainable food and beverage perspective and uh, addressing food waste. Um, so, so um, you know, food waste accounts for about six to eight percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. And us as an organization, we, we had set the goal to at least half our food waste um, from 2019 uh, baseline by 2030. Um, so the, 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 the team at uh, the food and beverage team at the resort has definitely stepped up to the challenge. And uh, they've undertaken a couple of things, one being you know, uh, making sure that their, their staff is fully trained on sustainable food and beverage practices. So they undertook a training that was developed for us by the World Wildlife Fund. Um, and they've also, imp they've also piloted very innovative artificial intelligence waste management technology um, so in, in, in two of their kitchens specifically, and in a period of six months, they were able to cut their food waste by 50%, uh, which, is, which is quite significant. And that was, that was in the latter half of last year. And what this artificial intelligence uh, waste management technology does is it, uh, it basically helps chefs uh, weigh the amount of food waste that's going out, gives them data and analytics in terms of you know, what specifically is being wasted and ultimately leads to improved Decision making and um, and 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 improved behavior from the team. So and, and this particular provider is called Winnow. Um, there are others. Um, there are other providers of of these sorts of artificial intelligence technologies that are being used across our our portfolio. But uh, this this type of technology is great to use. And overall, we're really proud of what they've done and really show a commitment to to um, you know to sustainability and. Um, that's, that's all I wanted to share uh, as far as examples. There's a lot more we can talk about after the, after the panel, but I uh, wanted to share these. And, and just to leave with a note that, you know, while we talked about a lot of great things, there's still, there's still a lot to do. It's a, it's a continuous journey. There's, we're, we're definitely on, on the way. And, uh, and, uh, but I just wanted to highlight some of the great things that are being done across and I'm looking forward to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zaya.
Great. So um, as you mentioned about Susanna, so we shall we hand that mic to Susanna, please. Wait. Thank you so much, Coco. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thanks for the invitation to the GSTC. Well, my name is Susanna, and uh, please let me tell you more about where I work and live. Usair already introduced uh, Peninsula Papagayo. For me, this is Peninsula Papagayo is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. And I have the honor to be the Director of Sustainability there. Peninsula Papagayo is a 1,400-acre luxury coastal destination it is located in the northern Pacific coast of Costa Rica. We are featuring a four seasons, uh, an Andas Hotels, a marina, a golf course, private residential community, and also a Ritz Carton Hotel currently under construction. As you all know, Costa Rica is a leader in sustainable tourism worldwide. Peninsula Papayo is the most sustainable luxury resort in Costa Rica. We like to think of ourselves as the best of the best. Here's a roadmap. Um, we work on different areas, water, waste, emissions, biodiversity. So each of these green boxes are projects. One of them is the we know uh, smart technology like to reduce food waste. I don't have time to go into this uh, into detail, but for the purpose of the presentation, let me share with you a real story which reflects the challenges that we had to overcome in the last years. So more than 20 years ago, the University of Costa Rica started studying the corals in our area. Over that period of time, 95% of the coral died. It was largely caused by human recreation, development, and climate change. So with a mission to bring them back to life, Peninsula Papagayo joined forces with the University of Costa Rica and other organizations, and we created the Culebra Reef Gardens Alliance and started a coral restoration project in our waters. By 2020, we had installed several structures, like the ones you see in the picture. These are like real pictures of our coral farm. We had hundreds of corals growing in our water. When the pandemic hit, uh, the country closed. We had like no income, no tourists, and also the scientists were unable to travel to Peninsula Papagayo and take care of the corals. So Peninsula steps in again. And we did not only cut the funding, but we also sent paid staff into the waters to make sure that these corals were uh, thriving. So by 2022, when the worst of the pandemic seemed over, we were quite you know, relaxed, our corals were growing, but suddenly one day something really tragic happened. I remember it as if it was yesterday. So it was a sunny day, calm waters, people were enjoying like the beach with their father boarding, jet skis, and I get a notification on WhatsApp by our uh, emergency response team. And here's what I, I want to show you, what they showed me. So I get a picture. This is what I get on my WhatsApp last year. So this is one of our largest coral structures laying on the beach full of dead white corals. Um, what had happened was that one of the local vendors' boat dropped an anchor right into the structure, drag it, and destroy it. Two years of work and a major portion of our corals dead just in 30 seconds. So as you can imagine, I was like shocked. I was destroyed. I wanted to go and look for the guy and yell at him, to be honest. And I was like really hopeless, didn't know what to tell to my team. Um, I mean, it was pointless to continue with the project. And we kind of felt guilty for not having been able to protect the corals. So we were thinking of how to continue, and we came up with a conclusion and kind of a revelation. So we needed to involve the local community. We also needed to engage guests, and we needed to increase our budget in order to protect these corals and make sure this never happened again. And of course, we didn't have that hopeless feeling ever again. So we started by seating all the relevant stakeholders at the table and at the same table. We created a sustainability committee on biodiversity, and we invited both Andas and Four Seasons to the table. I was really happy to find out that both of them wanted to join and support the project. And indeed, um, Four Seasons team, including USAID, were encouraging their properties around the world to support local conservation projects. And we had one just right in front of their property. So our coral planting experience was born in one of those comedies. We created a two-hour experience where our guests will hand some plant corals with a nameplate on the structure of the family or the corporate group. 
they will adopt the coral for an entire year. They will get to know more about our project and also about the challenges corals are facing worldwide. This experience has been a major success. We have doubled the number of structures only in five months. We have now 7,000 growing fragments, and we are the largest coral restoration project in Costa Rica. With more than 250 core, um, people who joined the experience in the last five months, we have been able to generate a third of the income we needed to um, cover our annual expenses. And with more than 60 fish species identified, we are now witnessing how marine life is bursting around our coral. And our Four Seasons guests do really enjoy when they uh, you know, snorkel around. They get to see uh, seahorses, octopus, sharks, and um, a lot of kind of, of species. So we like to say, after that experience in particular, that when there is um, a will, there is always a way. So before I finish, I want to share with you some lessons, important lessons we learned in this journey, not only in the coral experience, but in all our projects for the last two years. First of all, continuous communication for us is key to success. So we have continuous meeting with all relevant stakeholders, and we also have periodic um, yearly meetings to set goals and align priorities. Why? Because therefore we make sure that we are all in the same page, we allocate resources, and we put our efforts to achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Peninsula Papagayo is a complex destination. Um, it's a large resort, and we have a lot of stakeholders. So for example, I have one boss, but I have to report and meet the goals of five different organizations, including Four Seasons, Andas, etc. So that needed a strong governance structure to get organized. So we created sustainability committees, two different kind of committees. Strategic committee, which approves the annual strategy and oversees it. And then the operating committees, we have six different operating committees, one for each of the areas, like water, emissions, biodiversity. And these committees make sure that these projects and the strategy uh, is implemented. Apart from that, we have dedicated, uh, we have uh, hired a dedicated ESG team for the resort and also ESG coordinators at both hotels. And now, and in order to secure the achievements and all our commitments, we are also finishing our sustainability policy for Peninsula Papagayo. So in addition to that, we also learned that sustainability is not just about us. It's not just about how good we tell our clients how well we are doing. It is also how we engage them to care and how we make part of our sustainability strategy. So in a resort which is meant for holidays and relaxation, like luxury resort, we don't want to make guests feel guilty. But instead, we are focusing on, first of all, providing and offering experiences which leave a positive footprint in the environment or the community, such as the coral planting. We also have a cultural road trip. We even go and count monkeys and give the data to the scientists to monitor the wildlife. And we also do volunteering. Apart from that, we are integrating sustainability into the Kids Club offer because for us, like younger generations are uh, key for a sustainable future. And we want to make sure that sustainable choices are the preferred by your guests by making them cheaper and also easier than non-sustainable choices. So for example, last year, we eliminated all single-use plastics in the guest phase and experience. We have installed water stations around the resort, and we are providing this bottle for free to all our golf players. So now, whenever they are thirsty, it's much easier for them to go and refill their bottle in one of their stations rather than getting an Aquapana or San Pellegrino in one of our food and beverage outlets, which of course has also a really high carbon footprint. Finally, we believe that an organization and particularly uh, resorts need to benefit the local community beyond just creating employment, which of course we need, and uh, locally sourcing. So we created 20 years ago our own NGO. It's called Creciendo Juntos, Growing Together. You can check their website. Uh, we have a, an amazing impact. One of the projects we currently have is called the Home Gardens. So during COVID, we set up 60 home gardens for 60 families, which have been harvesting their own produce to get some income out of that. We are sending our guests and large corporate groups to volunteers in these home gardens, also our staff. And some of the guests have been so, ins so inspired by what they are doing that um, some, like two, two or three months ago, we had a really large group staying at Four Seasons. They went, volunteered, and after that, they decided to donate a truck 
So now these people are able to home delivery and have seen how this, the sales are increasing. So it's amazing and we believe that luxury resorts, but also the rest of the hotels, should really take advantage of the kind of guests we have to use them like a pivot and, and a catalyst for changing and further community impact. And uh, well, before I finish, I just wanted to insist on the fact that I believe we shouldn't get discouraged. It's, it's good times currently for the sustainability professionals. I know like most of our directly or indirectly work on sustainability, so more and more companies are hiring sustainability teams. I know it's not good times for the planet, so we will have also like challenges and bad days in our daily job. But I do believe we have all the ingredients for a more sustainable future. And if we have been able to have such an impact in a place such as complex and big and you know, luxurious at the Peninsula Papagayo, I do believe it can be replicated in any part of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susanna, for sharing the lessons, which is really good. So let's move on to our last but not least important speakers. Hush. And I hope all you jo enjoyed the Turkish dish yesterday at the uh, Barnard Hotel. So thank you very much, Tomshi, for bringing us. That's a wonderful deal. So uh, yes, please have the stage, please. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm Tunç Batum. I'm the Barnard Hotel's coordinator. Uh, I hope you enjoyed last night's dinner as well. Well, two weeks ago, I was a speaker at TEDx conference, and that conference changed all of my scope of presentation for now. Because when I was in the conference, this, the, all the subject is about sustainability and relative issues, issues as today. And amongst the crowd, there were university students and some of my friends, and everyone was uh, really paying attention to what I was saying, but uh, after the conference, my friends say, one of the university students turned to his friend and say, what a boring presentation. I'm tired of this, you know, figures and all these statistics. And this, this you know, kind of uh, gave me a, a different edge that we, ha we are looking on the right uh, angle, but I think we are misleading some uh, things on the youngsters, the effects that we're trying to Change, change their attribution and uh, their future uh, should be more concentrated on these issues. Uh, while I find these comments as just, I must admit that I couldn't find more charming way to explain that the disasters we have created are imminent, even though I know how boring the subject is sometimes, uh, for the ones who have a different focus driven by social media nowadays. It's difficult for young people who make up one-third of the world's population, as you can see from this chart. Hence, this is the only time for awakening, unfortunately. We as humans living on this earth, the only ones who can slow down and turn this vicious cycle back for the sake of our nature. If we do not act and wake up now, then 20, 30 years later, teens may find or a glass of fresh water, or clean food, oxygen, etc. Sustainability subject is more interesting for graduates and working people than youngsters under 20 years old. We should find ways to attract their attention and make their, their collaboration more voluntarily. Not only the schools or university, but all other industries like tourism should pay more attention on informing their interns or young fellow workers on the sustainability matters, and if possible, we should put them in a role that they can contribute more. On this, under this understanding, we are giving ex extensive trainings to all levels what we have doing on sustainable matters in our group. We do also involve their families and some other events that which took place as sponsors or contributors, for instance, uh, the Caretta Caretta turtle, uh, which we named as Lara, was found on 15 October 2020 in Gönig area, injured and in poor health due to plastics that she ate. She was rehabilitated by Decamer, which is the Sea Turtles Research, Rescue and Rehabilitation Center, uh, with the support of Lara Barut Collection. This lady turtle is still trackable from internet 
and uh, now heading its way to Egypt. Uh, most of our fellow workers, families, friends, and university students, and everyone is pretty much interested on tracking her. Uh, this is one of an interesting edge that uh, you can find uh, getting this subject more attractive in some ways. Now let's get back to the main point, what, are, what we are doing in resorts. Uh, food and beverage consumption is taking a big role in greenhouse gas increase and water pollution. Agriculture is taking almost 12% of the greenhouse's gas emissions. Overall food systems are creating more side effects on keeping a clean planet. As tourism investment investors and hotel professionals working in, especially in all-inclusive resorts, we should be more concentrated on dealing not only with decreasing plastic use and water use, recycling waste or energy saving, but with decreasing food consumption as well. You can see the side effects of food productions as follows in the chart. Uh, let me give a good example. Uh, let me talk about Turkey first. Turkey has more than uh, 500 to 600 resorts in uh, Mediterranean Peninsula and more than thousands of other uh, city hotels and other type of uh, accommodations. So uh, it's a huge uh, sector for tur Turkey, which is every year increasingly hosting more than 50 million uh, guests around, from around the world and locally. So imagine how much the food is processing in these hotels. Let me give you a, a different example that we did before uh, in a resort. Well, um, we had one tons of food waste every day in this huge resort. This resort had a huge land. Uh, it was a golf resort, actually. We decided to have a compost machine. Well, buying a compost machine is easy, but making it work is not easy. That's how we learned by practicing. Uh, we changed this machine maybe three times uh, for better performance. In the end, we managed to produce four kilograms of compost daily. Uh, then we opened nine acres of land in the same resort for vegetable and fruit plantation. And we harvest all of them uh, back to the hotel, which is a 360 recycling process. Also, the leftover compost is uh, sent to local farmers, and we were contributing to local farmers at that resort as well. As Borut Hotel's collection, we are struggling against the climate crisis and, um, sorry, and unconscious consumption of natural resources within the scope of We Care All project. This project has been developed on a comprehensive approach which has been concentrated on easing the outcome of every single aspect that has been affecting our environment negatively. For instance, group is providing all its electricity from green energy, renewable energy, to reduce its carbon footprint, which is very costly, I can say, than buying normal energy. Within the scope of projects we care all, group provides both social, cultural, and environmental issues with great sensitivity. It acts with a common mind within the projects of suggesting coming from the savings, innovation, and environmental committees. It focuses on activities such as reducing the amount of plastic and waste, using local products, supplies for purchasing, preventing water waste, etc. Also, supporting the local producers, the, uh, the natural flavors of Antalya are being used in all levels of food production. And there's a specialized a la carte restaurant uh, only in local cuisine, uh, which is uh, buying products about 60 kilometers wide. In 2022, our hotel group successfully completed the third stage audit in October, which has a duration until 2030, and received a well-known sustainable tourism certificate from GSTC by meeting 100% of the criterion. As a final note, all resorts and hotels should 
puts a substantial amount in their budgets, that's for sure. And as tourism investors, NGOs, officials, and professions of Turkey, Turkey, we have been building our local style of hospitality approach more than 70 years. Millions of local and international visitors do appreciate us every year in increasing numbers. Therefore, we do feel committed on our environmental promises, not only for the sake of our land, but also for the sake of the sustainable world, which we call the only home for us. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, Tosh. Thank you. Now we are open to discussion. I saw a bunch of very good questions on the Slido. So if you haven't already done so, please strongly recommend you to, to submit your questions. So I got this first question from Ahmed. General, how are you dealing with sustainable, sustainable criteria when it's not matching with the hotel branding? So can I pass the question to Uzaya? Do you want to take the floor? Yeah, sure. I would just love some clarification on the question, like um, the sustainability criteria. What, uh, what is that in reference? What is that in reference to? Would that be like? Yeah, <laughs> that's the question for all my sustainable standards you're talking about, right? Eh? Thank you. If the hotel would like to implement the certification, for example, any name, you can name it, and it's contradicting with sustainability uh, branding for your hotel. For example, if the criteria said that you have to replace the toiletries, the one-way toiletries with dispensers, and your branding not do that. So what you are going to do at that time? Yeah, yeah, Thank absolutely. You. So for that, for that particular example, I mean, we are uh, committed to eliminating the use of uh, single-use plastics in the guest experience. So in, in, in almost all of our resorts, we've transitioned to the large format bulk am amenities that are, that are refillable. Um, so I think, I think you know, when we look at our, when we develop our strategy, we're looking at what are best practices um, and, and we're looking to implement those. And I don't think it's contrary to sort of the, the, the brand and the luxury experience. And in a lot of ways, you know, the, the, the luxury customer now is asking for sort of sustainable practices, um, almost 80% are asking for sustainable practices in the hotel that they stay in. From a generational perspective, um, you know, these values align deeply with, you know, sort of the younger generations, millennial, Gen Z, um, and those groups are driving 85% of luxury sales growth, and our uh, millennials in particular are, are three times more likely to seek sustainable travel than, than you know, Gen X, for example. So. Um, we're looking at we're looking at um, you know certainly best practices and um, and and we're we're doing it in a way that uh, we're addressing it in a way that still is compatible with the things that a luxury customer wants like they still want quality uh, so we're not going to compri compromise uh, or or compromise on on quality they still want uh, you know comfort um, and, and there's ways to do it um, you know that in, in a way that aligns still with the luxury experience and that's what we've been implementing. Yeah, thank you, Zara. Is anybody else wanted to compliment on that? Okay, so if not, if that answers the question, then thank you very much, Aham. And we move on to the next question on Slido, which have you been measuring guests' feedback in response to sustainable sustainability policies? Has their satisfaction increased in line with your sustainability measures? Should I pass the mic to? Uh, Yishan, yes, would sure. you like to take um, the floor and answer that question? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, we are measuring each and every uh, action that we are doing uh, from all the online travel agencies, from digital channels, social media accounts and everything because the most important part is to hear what our guest is talking about, what is their expectation. At the beginning of my speech, as I said that our main aim is uh, every moment matters, so we want to deliver the best to our guests especially. So sure. when it comes to the sustainability and such kind of things, of course, we are measuring and each and every resort and hotels all around the world under Radisson Hotel Group, we have responsible business coordinators inside mm -hmm. our hotels. And the main aim of these people working in different uh, departments, however, mainly in charge of the sustainability project and training the team members, working every department of the hotel, 
creating awareness and reporting to corporate office every month measurable results. And additionally, every country has a district regional or district or sometimes regional responsible business coordinators. All these actions is also by region that we are measuring and also sharing the best practices each and every month and also inspiring our people with the best practices, with newsletters, and also we are publishing a yearly responsible business report and sharing from all uh, channels. So these are the key initiatives that we are doing. Yeah, that's great. Um, so um, let's move on to the next a little bit challenging questions. Can luxury tourism truly be compatible with sustainability in a world where reducing resource consumption is necessary for sustainability? So, um, Susanna, would you like to take the floor and answer yeah. that question? But thanks for the challenging question, indeed. Um, <laughs> I definitely think that it's compatible. I mean, that's even a thought I, I sometimes used to have before working at luxury uh, hospitality. So, as Susair said, we have a food waste system now, uh, food waste reduction system now in place. We aim to reduce food waste at a level where we will be more efficient and le generate less than standard non-luxury hotels. So we aim to do the same for carbon footprint, water footprint. We are taking care of biodiversity. I mean, I can assure that if Peninsula was not Peninsula as a resort, we wouldn't have the biodiversity we have there because we are taking care of that land, of, of that realm. We are making sure that nobody sets fire there is no hunting, we protect our animals, we have the coral restoration project, we are protecting the mangroves. We are even like trying to uh, release some native species and making sure that we only plant native species. So I truly believe that we are in not only not, uh, you know, getting it worse, but we are um, getting it better and we are really making sure that it gets more and more sustainable and we want to lead by example. So I, my, my response will be yes, definitely yes. Okay, great. So um, we do we do have some questions about the um, OTA. So I will move the next question to Torch. Um, from a hotel standpoint, is there any content you would like to share on the OTA websites regarding sustainability? Thank you very much for Takashi for submitting the question. Torch, do you wanna do you wanna take that? Yeah, certainly. Uh, actually, uh, in the last five or six years, OTAs and other travel agencies, uh, they have almost the same standards, and especially the big resorts or mid-sized resorts, the quality departments are having incredible inspections every year from uh, each big uh, tour operator or OTAs. So the content that you provide to these websites differ according to the uh, OTA or travel agency. So there's, no, there's not, not a one specific explanation or content that you provide. It depends on what they require, according uh, which country they're coming from and etc. But um, yes, normally we have some inspections from government and other entities, but in last years, uh, most of the travel agencies or OTAs are inspecting us and um, uh, with the sustainability issues, we're pro providing lots of data and lots of uh, content uh, to them to provide to the guests sat satisfaction. Yeah. yeah, I guess there are always a balance about whether you put enough sufficient information for the guests and while you have a very simple kind of tag for the customers to actually choose from the sustainable option. So it's a very good question and, and I, I believe that uh, there is a balance between this. Thank you very much, Tosh. And then next question is for I think it's for Wuzaya. So um, I would be interested to, learn, to know if new developments you have made renewable energy source are non-negotiable. Yeah, that's a great, great question. So um, we're, we're in the process of updating our, our design and construction standards, and there's a lot of uh, sustainability elements within those. Um, so more to come on that. Uh, those should be finalized um, uh, shortly. Um, but um, 
as far as uh, as far as you know within those design and construction standards there's definitely going to be components of uh, of uh, you know uh, environmental efficiencies um, that need to be reached and there's elements of you know health and well-being so more, more to come on that uh, but we're very much in the process of, uh, of of updating our design and construction standards and sustainability is a key component of that so our design and construction team is been working uh, for a very long time on on these and uh, it's getting getting to the final stages um. yeah and also I think that there's another question for it was I just continue to ask that so for does for citizens aim to implement it um, GSTC accredited certification in certain percentage of your hotel yeah that's a great another great question appreciate <laughs> that appreciate the questions um, so um, our, our guidance to our properties has been very much to um, to, to pursue certifications that have, are at least rec are, are at least recognized by the the GSTC, uh, so we have a lot of properties in our portfolio that uh, that um, you know are are certified by various bodies that are um, recognized by the G GSTC. And we rec we rec very recently became a member of the GSTC um, earlier this year, actually. Um, so we don't have necessarily a percentage goal at the moment. Um, but it's something that we're definitely going to evaluate. It's something that's that's evolving. Um, I I myself have attended the the GSTC training that was offered here. Um, so so you know we're we're evaluating sort of the approach with uh, well, when it comes to echo labels like uh, like GSTC certification. Thank you, Zaya. So the next question from Pauline and a very active uh, question submitter. Uh, could you elaborate what you are doing in resort in terms of culture and social sustainability, such as inclusion of local communities and diversities? Can I go to Susanna? Yeah, could you please sure. take this one? So, um, yeah, well, we do have um, a lot of offer of hands-on and you know, cultural experiences for our guests. We try to make sure that they just not stay at the resort, but they can also go to local communities. We have a cultural road trip. We take them to Waitil, which is a really traditional small um, community located two hours away from our resort. They do like traditional pottery, like Chortega pottery. Uh, we take them there, then back to the resort. They um, stop at Rio Tempisque, where they collect sand for construction. They also go to some local farms, and all, of course, they have lunch in a traditional um, food and beverage um, small um, restaurant. And apart from that, we have worked a lot to open our resort to the local community. Last year, we created a so-called Women of Papagayo uh, project, which aims to bring together women and empower women. So we have guests, we have uh, also staff, we have uh, some of our homeowners, and we also bring people from the community. So together with Creciendo Juntos, we always bring to the events women from the community. Doesn't matter if it's like surfing, dancing, like cooking classes, whatever thing we do, we bring uh, women from the community. Uh, two months ago, we have also started a project to uh, bring students from the community to enjoy Peninsula Papagayo. So we are doing like chorus snorkeling with them. We are taking them on mountain biking. Uh, we are also taking them on our aerial challenge course. So we are very much working on opening um, our resort to the local communities, and also when we have some like out of uh, you know like really experiences which um, which are remarkable, and uh, we have like people visiting from outside, experts. We try to get them to donate their time and make the same out of in the community. So for example, whenever we have like wellness specialists at Four Seasons, they usually go and donate their time and they do like yoga class or like happiness workshops out of the communities because we want to make sure that this um, impact I was talking about before goes really beyond like that employment creation. Thank you. So um, Isham, um, how do you balance the expectation of tourists paying luxury price with the need to reduce consumption? Yeah, I was just looking at this. So the, the question, uh, the who asked and can please expand it a bit like in terms of like uh, to reduce consumption in which purposes is the, the, the owner of the question is still in the audience? Yes, please. Sorry. For example, at the bar, uh, in a luxury hotel, there'll be an expectation of many different brands of alcohol. Uh, how do you manage that and also manage a, a sustainability desire to reduce consumption? 
alcohol is just one example because yeah. there are many international brands, so they have a high carbon footprint. But you could also apply it to any food items as well. Yeah, I hope I that mean, clarifies. Yeah, especially the countries like Turkey, where the alcohol and the percentages, the taxes and, and everything is very, um, really higher. Uh, of course, when we are just looking at the, the guest perspective, it is important again to, to hear them and to listen them because especially right after the pandemic, what we realized that the, the, the guest perception and the, the expectation is also more sustainable uh, when they are willing to travel wherever they want to go. Of course, that they are just questioning what are the, the, the sustainable initiatives uh, of the, 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 the hotels, or maybe I couldn't understand you correctly. The, the question, maybe, sorry. Can someone pass the mic, or any other people could answer as well? I mean, it's, it's really, it's about overconsumption. And yeah, overconsumption. Because effectively, as a luxury brand, you're normalizing overconsumption. So yeah. what responsibility do you feel for that and what, what steps are you taking to, to try and address it? There's someone else from the... Yeah. yeah. So, I would like yes. to jump in. so we don't really normalize overconsumption. That's indeed why we are like taking these measures and measuring our impact. So our goal, at least for us, when building or refurbishing the hotels is to make it as, you know, as intelligent, like rooms, as intelligent as possible. So our guests, which are like, you know, enjoying, they don't have to worry about, oh, did I left the air condition on? Or did I, you know, shut the door or like, so we want to automatize everything to make sure that we are using the resources in an efficient way. And in addition to that, I do believe that sustainability is kind of evolving. So it's no longer about, you know, using too much resources and having like this enormous buffet. Sustainability, at least uh, luxury sustainability, is more about experiences, like unique experiences. So that's why what we are now focusing on, offering unique experiences that our guests can only have in Peninsula Papagayo in our situation and reducing consumption, of course. Thank you, yeah. Siona, for, for taking that. So the next question, I think, is for Tosh uh, from Rika. How do you combine golfing and sustainability in your resorts? And for me? Oh, sorry. Yeah, for you. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, we don't have a golf area at the moment. I, I, did I get the question right? It's talking about golf and sustainability. Well, actually, as far as I know, um, now golfing, the structure of the golfing was pretty much against the sustainability about 10 years ago. But when you come today, all these irrigation systems and the grasses that you use technologically are totally different in use. So for instance, before the grasses were had an irrigation system that you have to uh, give water to them maybe three times a day. Now you have some special grasses that, that you have to uh, put the, uh, operate the irrigation like four or five days a day, uh, five days uh, term. So uh, the things are changing in golfing uh, story. Uh, when you take a look to the golf investors, they are pretty much, as far as I know, uh, concerned with sustainable sh issues as well, and they are investing on these technological things that about using um, less chemicals and uh, less water on the golfing system in the resorts, as far as I know. Thank you. Um, there's another question about um, a lot of waste and garbage outside of territory of resorts. Are you working on this issue? I Someone, can also yeah, sure. give a reply because we also have a best practice about this issue. Yes, of course, we do work with the uh, local communities uh, around us, uh, all, all, all around the, the, the regions, especially for the communities who need food. So we are just on a daily basis, we are working with them. And we also initiated a social responsibility project that we work with a restaurant who is providing food three times in a day. Um, and our hotels, each and every month, supporting this restaurant's uh, food and beverage needs. 
And we were just each month choosing a celebrity who is just hosting the event to invite many people to the restaurant to create awareness how to support the local uh, communities. And this project has around took place one year, uh, maybe a bit more. And I believe that we just created a great brand awareness about those uh, sustainable projects. Just engage with them. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Um, so the next question is uh, to all of the panelists. Um, do you use refillable shampoo, shower gel? And what about the feedbacks about this, especially luxury hotel guests? It's a lot all about the customer's feedback and, and expectation. Do anyone wants to do it? Do anyone, does anyone want single use ones? So, who's that? Yeah, I'm happy to address that. I, I, I uh, mentioned earlier that uh, we were transitioning to, um, transitioning away from the, the single use plastics and switching to the large format refillable bottles. And, and uh, you know, so the, the, the feedback that we've received has been great, I think. I think it's, it's key to make sure that it's also a good user experience as well. Like, you don't wanna just yeah. buy the cheapest bottle you can, right? I, I think. I think the, um, the, the the look and feel of the particular bottle or dispensing system should be elegant. Um, and, 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 and our approach to sort of rolling these things out is very much to do pilot studies first. Um, you know, maybe implemented in, in you know, a group, of, a group of hotels or I even in a single hotel in some rooms, gather feedback from, from users on, you know, from guests in terms of like how they felt about it, what were the issues, um, I've been a part of this sort of testing myself as well, and in, in a particular case, you know, we found I found that you know one one particular bottle might have been a bit too hard to you know this, it took too much like en energy and pressure to dispense it out, and then you, then you switch to another one. So you don't want to invest you know you don't want to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars or or more to uh, in, in something that's not going to match with sort of guest expectations. So um, so yeah, that's how we sort of get feedback. We're, we've transitioned. Uh, more or less, and um, you know, you might get the occasional guest that asks for, for for single-use ones, but it's very, it's a very low low number. And that same thing goes for 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 water bottles. Um, you know, in our a lot of our a lot of our resorts, um, we've transitioned to sort of these ref refillable water stations, reverse osmosis systems. Even in our Istanbul, uh, even in Istanbul hotels, they're not resorts, but our, our hotels, they've done a lot of work to, um, you know, you know, invest in equipment to essentially filter bottle, uh, filter the water, you know, sparkling as well as still. Um, and they've invested in purchasing elegant, very elegant glass bottles. Um, and and that, that's been rolled out and, and there's no complaints about, uh, or, or nearly no complaints about sort of having to use these bottles. They're very elegantly designed. So it's uh, really important to, to sort of test and, uh, you know, make sure that it's compatible with, it meets the needs of, 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 of guests. Um, Zana, I don't know if there's anything anything that that. Uh, we didn't have any, com like. Com yeah, we definitely no, 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 like innovative. Nobody Sorry. No, nobody complied so far yeah. at the resort. Like, and we eliminated all single-use plastics. I mean, and we have like even like I did as a mystery shopper myself. Mm -hmm. So I went into the hotel uh, when they didn't know me so well. Now I cannot. <laughs> but um, yeah, and we just not like the shower gel and shampoo, but all single-use plastics were eliminated, like the bottles. Nobody complained, and indeed, they were grateful for us. So in the survey, when they check out, many people were like really giving us the thank you for, for like being more sustainable. So they do like it, as long as you keep like, you know, a luxury brand, like shampoo and, you know. Yeah. Same they are fine. for the, um, uh, the, the our resort hotels as well, especially after the pandemic period the perception of the people is totally changed and they really appreciate about the efforts that we are delivering. And uh, as per my knowledge, we never get any complaints uh, about the issue. Great, Tosh, you have, you have something Same, to add no, up to say? No, no, so no complaint, no. yes. Very good, the feedback's from the guest expectations. So we are already out of the time, but thank you very much everybody for um, submitting all the questions. Just uh, before we wrap it up, could each of you give us um, a short um, summarize and, and also some expectation about what you think will be the sustainability trend in resorts? Can we start from... Yeah, yeah, please? sure, of course. So it is a very uh, long journey. And for Radisson Hotel Group, uh, we are working with sustainable hotels since 19, 
89. So it's a very long journey for us. And to, to, uh, to set an ambitious goals and setting ambitious plans is very important. Training our people uh, is very important. And of course, delivering the best to a sustainable world, to a sustainable future, and to the next generation is important. As being one of the leader hotel group in the, the world, we continue to, to apply our ambitious goals and plans in our hotels and resorts. Great, Jose? Yeah, from, from my perspective, just really briefly, um, I think on the, on the sustainable food and beverage side or on the food and beverage side period, movement towards more vegan, vegetarian uh, cuisine, uh, movement to more local, local ingredients. Um, those, are, those are some key trends that expect to continue. I think you know, we were having a conversation last night at the dinner table just about you know, how many people seem to be vegan or vegetarian. I know we're all sustainability people here, and that's like one of the main ways you can, you can, you can reduce your impact. But um, I think it's a, it's a, train, a trend that's, that I've seen elsewhere as well, and I think that's going to continue uh, to progress for sure. Yes, Susanna? So from our side, I will add, well, apart from what they said, which is like, I totally agree, uh, I will add going towards like net zero or at least like reducing emissions, not offsetting, but reducing. Uh, reporting, I'm seeing more and more reports and, and, you know, guests and investors and local community, they want to know what we are doing, what our impacts, like the positive and the negative are. Um, experiences, as I said before, I think we are moving towards like a re the regenerative tourism where guests want to really go hands-on and feel like the local culture and the community and feel they are living like a positive footprint. Um, and also like digitalization and automatization, I think we have to make things easy for our guests at the hotel while, while they are like on holiday. Yeah, great. Ali? Thank you. Well, actually our sustainability uh, efforts in our hotel group is quite extensive and every year we're adding a couple of uh, things more and but the most important thing we are pretty much backed up by the government and with the TGA um, uh, which are supporting us with uh, almost everything in terms of the standard standardization and all the relative measures that we have to take but but the most important thing as my colleagues mentioned uh, being local and acting local and informing people, informing people around you is much more important than anything that you do. Because uh, in the end, we are professionals and professional entities. But around us, there are millions of people living. So it's very nice, not only for governments or NGOs, but for, for companies like us to inform uh, our guests and uh, fellow citizens around us uh, regarding the sustainable issues which is one of our target in the main in the following years as well yeah absolutely right sustainability needs all stakeholders engagement and we need to work towards the same direction together and it needs all the efforts thank you very much ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us today and then let's just join me thanking to all of the uh, wonderful panelists today thank you very much everybody thank you, thank you.